In this week's video, we're going in a little bit of a different direction and discussing the tools in the management toolbox that don't get talked about enough. Mossy Oak Properties, where outdoorsmen find their favorite place. We have discussed a lot of things, all wildlife management, and one of the things that we discuss quite a bit is that uncomfortable feeling of wildlife management. Right. And the definition of that you know, as we've talked about is you know, maybe getting a dozer and clearing off a, a wooded area to create a food plot or create an old field environment or even starting fire, doing a control burn for the first time. Oh my gosh, the overwhelming yeah. sense of, oh my, you know, am I doing the right thing? But things that we haven't talked about enough, and I think a lot of people don't talk a lot about, is those uncomfortable feelings of doing more for wildlife. Some of the things that you might have to do that's in the toolbox, you occasionally open up the lid and you look and it's there, mm -hmm. but you don't want to reach down and grab it. Yeah, there's those tools in the management toolbox like we've talked about and you mm -hmm. just discussed, chainsaws or fire, yeah. food plots, all the equipment that is the fun part mm -hmm. of wildlife management. It may make us a little nervous, but we enjoy it. But there are those topics in that toolbox that we open the lid, as you said, and we look at them and then you know, we feel a little uneasy, and then we'll say, well, we'll revisit them another Yeah, we day. go, I don't have time for that today. Yeah. yeah. I'd rather do the fun stuff. But those topics, what we're going to discuss in this video especially, are topics that need to be addressed because they directly influence the future of our wildlife. Yeah. I mean, we talked about in this video series about, you know, white-tailed deer. Yeah. The wild turkey. And even pollinators fit this, what we're about to talk about. Right. But let's discuss the white-tailed deer, what we're really kind of hinting around, tiptoeing around. And that is population control. Yeah, these are the glory days mm. in the world of the whitetail. If you've heard that saying before, I believe it to be true. Mm. There are high numbers of whitetails. We are managing them, I think, more effectively than we ever have before to a degree. There's more information about their management, more research about the animal. It's We're learning at an incredible pace. I remember 10, 20 years ago when I first got exposed to whitetails it, to where we are now. I mean, in, in that time frame, we've come so far. But despite being in the glory days, there is a tough road ahead, I do believe, and I know you do as well, yeah. for the species. We're going to have to make some decisions to ensure that we remain in the glory days and yeah. that the species has a promising future. So let's jump right into it and let's, let's discuss overpopulation in the white-tailed deer. Right. And it's a very concerning thing. Cody mentioned these are the glory days. I can't emphasize that enough. I strongly believe that as well. These are the glory days because the population right now, I mean, you can go out and have a successful sit, not necessarily harvest, but a sit and see plenty of deer yeah. enjoyment of watching them do their thing while you're up in a tree stand, ground blind or whatever. But with that comes problems. Right. You have whether you agree with this or not, uh, you have chronic waste and disease, you have disease issues, you have uh, EHD with the uh, increase in population, more animals are uh, that might have be exposed to EHD, bigger die off. Yeah. When you have a population that's being harvested, bucks versus does, things are kind of skewed. Socially, we are more, be we're being more selective in our harvest where when you do have more bucks being harvested than does. Short term, that's a great thing. Right. That's an accomplishment. High five everybody that's practicing QDM. But true quality deer management, that is not supposed to happen. Right. An overpopulation is an unintentional mm -hmm. result of it being the glory days. There was actually a time many, many years ago when there was an underpopulation yes. of white-tailed deer few hundred thousand across the whole United States. Now we're up in the millions and we're seeing that as a result of our hard work as managers and as mm -hmm. hunters and what we've invested in the species. But we're at the point now, as you mentioned, that we're facing an overpopulation problem across much of the whitetails range. And overpopulation of animals leads to stress yes. animals, as you mentioned, higher increased rate of disease transmission, but also focus on the animal itself mm -hmm. and the species itself and I say this a lot reference hunting and deer that the best thing you can do for white-tailed deer is to shoot and harvest white-tailed deer which sounds backwards and how can you go out and kill something that you love but don't focus so much on individual animals within the species look at the big picture and look at the species itself and when you remove so many mouths off the landscape you're going to have 
the animals that remain, which again, you're removing a select few mm -hmm. of bucks, older age class bucks, and a healthy number of does. The animals that remain, your fawns, your young bucks, your bucks reaching maturity in those does, they're gonna be healthier. They're gonna express their full potential. Your native habitat is gonna be less stressed because there's gonna be fewer mouths <laughs> munching yeah. away on them yeah. all day long. And as a whole, you're gonna have a healthier ecosystem yeah. as a result of harvesting more deer. Yeah, stress dictates everything in the whitetails world and everything that Cody just said, increased population, you know, you'll have smaller antler develop, uh, antler beam diameter, and the list goes on. But how do we harvest, you know, more white-tailed deer? You know, there's only so much freezer space. So many, so many state agencies only allow certain amount of tags. And if I have an abundance of white-tailed deer in my property and I'm only allowed three tags, how do I accomplish those goals? And that is simply by allowing more people on your property, something that we need to do a better job of as sportsmen to introduce new people and get people involved and then control the population on our properties. And also getting more involved in a program called FHFH, Farmers and Hunters Feeding the Hungry. And it might be a different name in your neck of the woods, but nice. the simple thing is, is going, getting a relationship with your processor. Yeah. You know, going to your processor and seeing if they have money donated or allocated to when you harvest a deer, whether it's gutted or not gutted, to be able to just to drop it off. Yeah. And they take care of the, the money and everything. Absolutely. While we are in the glory days of deer and deer hunting, we do have decisions to make moving forward, as we mentioned, to ensure that we remain in the glory days. And they may be tough decisions that we may be uncomfortable making, but again, we got to look at the species and its future. And it may be uncomfortable for us to make them in the present, but we got to look at the future of the species and make sure we're looking out for their best interest. Yeah. And another species that we discussed in our video series is a wild turkey. Yeah. Now the wild turkey, I tell you what, <laughs> it's a funny little creature in a sense of how there was a time period in the early 2000s where it's just like, when is it going to stop? Because every place had plenty of birds. I know I live in Ohio, so I'm just going to use that as an example. Every field, it seemed like had two, 300 birds. It was just um, just absolutely amazing the sight that was behold from moving turkeys everywhere and it just filled in the gaps yeah. and it was sky is the limit. Well, there is a limit. Yeah, <laughs> there right. was, it seemed like a thing. But as we mentioned in the white-tailed deer, there are concerns about the wild turkey. Right. It's regional, but yeah. there are some areas where turkeys are, are singing mm -hmm. or gobbling. <laughs> Just fine, fine. <laughs> pun intended. They're doing something. <laughs> right, but there are areas, states, and it's it's really local, it, yeah. it can be, that where numbers are declining, where mm. people aren't seeing poults, whether that's predation, poor quality habitat, or whatever the case may be, but as landowners, as wildlife managers, it's our responsibility to put forth our best effort, and your best effort is different than mine, which is different mm. than yours. If we have property in the wild turkeys range, we should be doing whatever we can within our means to ensure that we're working for that species and creating quality habitat for them so that they can have a promising future. And as we talked about in a prior video that the lacking habitat type, the missing component for increasing turkey numbers is brooding habitat. Yeah. So if you can manage habitat on your property through logging or timber stand improvement, chainsaw work, prescribed fire, disking to create old field environments, whatever the case may be, do that. The animal needs it. It, rely, it relies on that type of management. If you're a trapper, consider making use of that tool in the management toolbox. Yeah, definitely an uncomfortable thing as we mentioned to a lot of people. That's a tool that when we do lift up that lid in a box and yeah. look and go like, I don't have time, or I'm not experienced enough, or what do I do with it? I mean, all, all right. these questions that, especially for new landowners or new managers, like what, 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 how, and how, yeah. you know, it is an uncomfortable feeling, you know, but it's something for the species itself. You know, just like the white-tailed deer, you have to do certain things, and that is harvest, harvest more. Right. And when it comes to wild turkey, you can do habitat, as Cody mentioned, if you have the land, do it, everybody fits. Yeah a piece. Right. If you don't have land, how can you put brooding habitat? Right. Just become a trapper. Right. Yeah, learn. And that's something too, a trap, there's so many people that are willing to teach somebody because it is a sport or it is a heritage that is on, seems to unfortunately, 
lowering yeah. the amount of people utilizing you know steel yeah. so there are people willing to help you teach you how to do this what proper tool to use do you just have to find you know just they're, they're there yeah you know but it's a tool that is uncomfortable but trapping and then doing habitat management that is our key to getting back to the success that the wild turkeys deserve. That's right. In the turkey world right now, it seems like there are two sides yes. to the species. And some people say, well, you need more habitat. And, and they some are people correct. say, well, you need to trap. <laughs> the animal needs both. And yes. do whatever you have within your means to accomplish that because it is about the turkey and the species first and your personal beliefs second. Yep. And so that leads us to our last thing. And of all things, it's not a game it's not a game species right and we just talked about it in our last episode and that is diversifying on your property such as pollinators yeah we mentioned in that video that one out of every three meals that we consume is a result of pollination by native bees or mm -hmm. honeybees so quite literally if you take them off the landscape we're going to be walking around on empty stomachs yes. but, but more practically it's a limiting ecosystem. It's a limiting habitat. Every year we're losing habitat to fragmentation, mm -hmm. urbanization, development. And whitetails, they're adaptable. They, you'll see them in your backyard eating your yeah. grass mowed down to this and your flower plants, whether you like it or not. Turkeys, to a degree, they can make, they can adapt and they can live in urban environments. Yep. Our native insects, not so much. They rely on pollinator patches like we discussed in the prior video and certain habitat types to exist and to continue. When you take those species, those insects, out of the chain that is our native ecosystem, the whole thing crumbles. It does, it really does. And how's that un an uncomfortable mm. thing? Well, it's outside the box. It's not in most people's comfort zone because of lack of knowledge. And let's call it it what it is. It has to deal with flowers. And a lot of people are like, that's not manly enough. But it is, again, it's an uncomfortable thing. We are losing our pollinator type of ecosystem. Right. Take a drive, I challenge you, take a drive and drive around and see how many old field type habitats are in your community. Right. Very lacking. We are losing those type of ecosystems that are really that very valuable they are the brooding habitat they are the pollinator species yeah fawning cover you can bring every species dang near into those type of ecosystems i mean early successional majority of wildlife utilizes that rough grouse mm -hmm. i mean the list goes on of hey we need to do more me to do more of those uncomfortable feelings yeah you know cutting a tree down People say the best thing that you could do for wildlife is to plant a tree. 20 years later, you'll have the benefit of it. Yeah. I challenge you to think of it the other way. You cut a tree down, you will instantly see results for wildlife. Right. That's an uncomfortable thing to do. Yeah, it's like you said it really well. We Sometimes we have to swallow our pride or mm -hmm. make that uncomfortable decision or do what our instinct is telling us or do the opposite of what our well, yeah. instincts are telling us to do, which can be hard. It is uncomfortable, but we get, again, focus not, it's not about us. It's yeah. about wildlife. It's about whitetails, turkeys, our pollinators, our bees and butterflies, rough grouse, a species on significant decline. It's about them. It's yeah. not about us. We are stewards of the land. It's our responsibility to set those species up in the habitats they call home well for the future. When you do true conservation, it's not a right issue. It's not a left issue. It's not a Republican issue. It's not a Democrat issue. It's about wildlife, and that's how it always should be. Wildlife will always win when we choose them. Mossy Oak Properties, where outdoorsmen find their favorite place.